just quickly what uh, my role is, is just a client executive, executive for IBM here in BC. So I get the opportunity to work with the universities, with a lot of the Crown Corps, um, some of the core government. Um, but what I wanted to just uh, go through, just quick sort of poll. So who here is entrepreneurial or has a, perfect, okay. Um, and how many of the folks here have some sort of um, IT related or data development type application that they're trying to get off the ground? So a few people, okay. Um, so what I'll talk about it today is uh, what IBM is doing to help facilitate um, the growth in sort of the startup market. Now you, you could imagine, so IBM, you know, been around a little while. Um, we uh, have lots of, of sort of the legacy um, institutions in Canada, so governments, banks, insurance, etc. So you could imagine the person that was pitching this to like the board that says, we need to find a way to broaden our, our, our customer base, right? Things are changing dramatically and we want to go after startups, right? With, you know, potentially no money, but just a lot of really good ideas, right? So wait a second, that, 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 that means that you don't want to go after the biggest organizations in Canada, you don't want to go after the multi-billion dollar institutions? No, that's right. Want to go after startups who are just getting going, a bunch of which will fail, but that's okay. So, um, so I'll just see if we can get this to function. Ah, there we go. Okay, so um, you know, IBM's a big IT and IT services company. What's different? What are we doing different now that we didn't do, you know, last year, the year before, 100 years ago? Um, and, and a lot of this has revolved around the whole idea of cloud. So is everybody familiar with at least some version of cloud and how we do it? Yeah? Okay. So there's this big thing. It's got computing in it and I access it from wherever, right? That's sort of the net of it, right? What what is new um, or what cloud enables is that it, it theoretically enables any person, any group of people to have access to technology that was really only available to the largest of the large organizations historically, right? So, and it, and literally this, this quote from, uh, from Jim Dieters before it is very, very true today in that anybody with a laptop and an access to the, the internet can have access to essentially the exact same computational horsepower, the exact same systems, the same development tools that were only available to the, the Fortune 500 even two years ago, right? So, and, and this is fundamentally a game changer and it's led to a ton of disruption in a lot of industries. So, um, you know, if we take a look at some of these industries and hopefully the slide will build properly, there we go. Um, you know, we've, we've seen huge disruption in telecommunications, we've seen huge disruption in the areas of, uh, uh, you know, Airbnb, music distribution, movie distribution. I mean, everybody's very familiar with, with all of these, right? And they've had massive impacts, right? You know, look at the, the, the hotel chains today and all of the consolidation that's going on because of the impact of things like Airbnb. Airbnb. So how, how many folks have used Airbnb? Or how many are Airbnb hosts, right? So, yeah, it's, it, if you haven't tried it, it, it's a fundamentally different way of traveling. And it has a lot of advantages over even a traditional hotel. Um, we're still trying to find a way to expense it with an IBM, but, but eventually we'll get there. Um, likewise with them, uh, who's had the opportunity to use Uber, right? So yeah, I know not so much in BC, but we'll get there, right? Um, but yeah, it fundamentally changes really the, the, the relationship you have with a vehicle, right? Do I really need a vehicle when, you know, I can get picked up and dropped off and not have to worry about sort of, um, uh, you know, worry about the, the typical things about, about around availability of taxis and stuff like that, right? So, you know, these are, these are fundamental game changers um, that are really enabled by the, uh, the consumption approach to technology or cloud, right? Um, and, and on other side uh, of the house, we're seeing huge disruptions in things like manufacturing, right? So additive-based manufacturing, 3D printing, right? This is just barely getting started. You know, again, before if you wanted to manufacture things, you needed a huge capital investment to do that, right? Now, increasingly, less so. And that'll just continue, that trend will continue. Um, one of the things to keep track of or keep your eye on is in financial services. Um, is everybody familiar with, um, with Bitcoin? Or, yeah, and blockchain, sort of the underlying architecture of it? Yeah, so the idea of having, uh, or disintermediary 
um, are, uh, getting rid of the middle layer associated with traditional finance organizations, right? I, I mean, it, it, so um, three months ago, I think we had three clients that were interested in blockchain. Now we have over 25 in Canada alone that have, um, yeah, have blockchain-based uh, projects underway, right? And again, these are being enabled by cloud. Okay, so the other thing that's interesting too is we've seen, um, uh, you know, traditional organization, or sorry, traditional um, models where people are developing products online, but now we have the idea of an API or an application uh, programming interface available as a product. So that's to say I'm, I'm not necessarily going to develop that thing that people will buy or consume by itself, but I'm going to sell something or I'm going to create something that is used as part of a larger delivery component, right? So, and this is really the, the, um, uh, the enablement of selling data as a product. So not necessarily the final product, but part of that overall supply chain, right? Um, and, you know, Square is a good example of, of how this works, right? They take a bunch of different components from credit card companies and banks and others. They put them together as a service, but they don't inherently control all aspects of the, of the service. Right, so they, they compose it and they make it available. Okay, so when you go to develop applications, how many people have been frustrated or have been um, blocked by the complexity of IT in general? Right, the the plumbing stuff. Right, so Yvonne's got her hand up. She knows all too much about it. But and you know, like with the previous speaker too. I mean, getting a lot of this to run or, or getting your organize your 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 business idea started. When you start digging into it, there's a lot of things to worry about, right? And, and for those of you that are looking at doing applications or other um, uh, business models that require you to move data, you got to worry about things. You got to worry about servers, you got to worry about networks, you got to worry about applications, who's got the, the skills to be able to do that. Um, are they available on your particular timeline or geography? Are they aware of the security issues? Because that's, that's you know, front page news pretty much every day. Um, and then beyond that, there's the application pieces, right? So what app am I going to write? What am I going to base it on? How am I going to maintain it? How am I going to release it? Um, and, you know, where do I put this stuff, right? I, okay, I want to put it in cloud, but is some of my data maybe private? So does that mean that it has to be in BC or in Canada? You know, the things get pretty complicated reasonably quickly. So what... Um, uh, and, and as we, we go through and, and, and we sort of look at the landscape of how most organizations or most startups look at this, a lot of them follow the same sort of idea in that I've, I'm going to acquire some data, right? I need to put that information somewhere. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, act upon it. I'm going to provide some sort of analysis or some sort of feedback or, or but I'm going to do something with the data and then I'm going to present that information back out, right? So th does that sort of three-part process resonate with the folks who are doing application development or analysis today? Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so, so the challenge is, of course, is that you need to understand all the different aspects of that stack. And traditionally doing that, you know, buying servers or buying machines to run it on, um, get it, getting everything up and running and then keeping it running is, is a bit arduous. And then at the end of the day, if you change your mind, you're left with a big investment, right? So this movement towards cloud and, and what we have with Bluemix, which is the, the platform as a service, really helps to enable that, that stack and manage it and maintain it, okay? So we'll go through a couple of things here. So, you know, there's the whole idea of platform-based development, which is what, what we're doing here, is the, the idea that there's a bunch of uh, modules or components that can be easily programmatically tied together to enable functionality for your applications that you're building, right? And whether that's a, an, an end-user-faced application running on a mobile device, or whether it's a bridge between two types of data, right? Having a, um, the platform and the component-based capability here means that you'll be able to deliver it far faster than you would in a traditional um, IT model, okay? Now, the platform is great, but kind of like when, remember when we were all buying smartphones a few years ago and you had your choice of, of you know, Apple or Android or BlackBerry? One of the decisions that we used to, to make is, okay, well, what's the app store like? Are the apps that I want available on that app store, right? 
So now most apps are in most places most of the time, right? Or at least the, the two big app stores that are left. Um, and and a, um, uh, a, a development platform is the same sort of challenges, right? Most of them are based on OpenStack, right? Which is one way of doing it. Um, and then there's the sort of the core OpenStack components, which includes you know, open source databases, open source access, um, uh, tools for, for uh, managing user authentication, et cetera. But what else is in that ecosystem or that, that platform um, that involves uh, n not just the open source stack, but all of the other things? So what, what would IBM be able to bring to the table that is uh, above and beyond what the sort of static um, or base stack is? And that includes things like Watson, um, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, the other thing is there's a whole bunch of third party applications uh, or components within this platform that provide additional services, right? So location services, geocoding services, um, delivery services, et cetera. Um, and, and again, the reason why you want to look at component-based development um, is really speed, right? The ability to, to um, develop something, try it, iterate on it, right? The key thing here is that if, if I can cut my development time from three days to a couple of hours, that means I've got lots of time to fail. Right? I've got lots of time to try something and then try it again and try it again. And that's an absolutely critical part of the process, right? It, you know, as a will tell you, getting it right the first time, having that, that, that perfect code, it's difficult. It's really difficult. In a lot of cases, it's impossible. So the, the bonus of, of going through this is because you get that feedback instantly, you get that development environment, not just at the development side, but at the user interface level and at the user uh, engagement side, you get that feedback faster, you can iterate and make your products better um, uh, and, and more relevant to your clients, right? So uh, one of the conversations we had earlier today, it was um, around the cultural change associated with, with the products that you're developing, right? Y you may have an absolutely fantastic um, application for a very specific um, uh, a client, um, and they may believe that it's great as well, but because it's something different than the way they do it today, you, you're still going to require some resistance. So being able to work with the client is, is really key. So again, and that's, that's done through, through the platform at speed. Um, okay, we'll see if the chart builds again. So we do, although there's only three icons on the, the chart for some reason, um, we do actually have uh, thousands of uh, clients, there we go. Um, both startups and traditional enterprises um, uh, using Bluemix as a, as a, as a, a component-based platform, right? And uh, a lot of the startups you probably don't recognize because they're startups, right? Um, uh, some of them actually we, we've actually acquired, so Ustream is a good example. Um, and then uh, lots of other enterprises, right? So um, uh, Tangerine Bank is, is based on Bluemix. Um, we've got RBC, GM, the big organizations as you would expect. Um, a kind of more local story is um, we were working with WestJet and WestJet came to us uh, in, in November with the idea of having a mobile app uh, that was specific for their seat sales for Christmas, right? So we were able to take them through the process, um, uh, build an application and get that first rev of the application back out to the clients within the same week, right? So very, very quick, and, and we're able to actually have it in production within with two and a half weeks. So actually fully running for clients who wanted to book uh, seat sales uh, for the Christmas season. So extremely fast fast turnaround. And um, and that had sort of the, the standard issues of having to deal with, you know, legacy IT as well as something new like mobile. So it's, it's just a local demonstration of how we did that. Um, you know, we do, um, so Bluemix is, again, it is becoming even more popular all the time. Um, we do, you can access Bluemix um, uh, directly. There's a 30-day trial for anybody that wants to access it. So, and the way that the, the Bluemix platform actually works is it's based on consumption, okay? So in other words, you can go, then the goal with the platform-based development is to make the barrier to entry as low as possible, right? So you, you again, two people in a coffee shop with two laptops and, and, and internet access should be able to develop the next Facebook, right? This is the goal of the platform. It's not just for development, it's also for operations, right? Um, and so it's, 
So it's great to have a platform. It's great to have the components. There, there is some skill required, right? This is a programmatic uh, environment, so you do have to understand some levels of programming. Um, uh, so if you need to learn how to program, Yvonne can help you, right? So, um, but, uh, but, but it's a very team-oriented uh, approach. Um, and, uh, but of course, sometimes there's that skill gap. It's like, okay, I've got my business idea. I have some technical people who can help me implement that, but what do, where do I go for architectural support? Right, what's the best way of incorporating my, my mobile application with my database for scalability? Um, how do I do things like high availability? How do I bake that into the application? The platform enables it, but it doesn't do it for you. So we, we have this idea, and it's called basically the garage, and we have a bunch of them scattered around the world, and that's basically their environment similar to this. We have um, people come in, sort of and pitch their ideas of what they want to do, and then the garage is a, um, a whole bunch of subject matter experts around application design, user interface design, um, uh, business continuity, resiliency, and they're available, and we all kind of sit around the table and walk through and sketch up and basically proto do the full prototype. And so these are typically two or three day types of sessions. Um, we actually write real code, we actually deliver real objects that can be used immediately. And, um, and the closest one right now is in Toronto. We're, we're desperately trying to get something out west. So ideally here in Victoria or Vancouver, but in BC. Um, but it's a great idea and, and we have a design thinking approach that we use that a lot of people are, are comfortable with. And it, um, it is a very quick way of, of uh, taking your idea and getting it into something that's real very, very quickly, right? Um, so what we typically do, and this is, you know, this is for large clients, is we have a kind of quick start ideas, right? So we use, um, you know, these sort of starter kits. They're, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. You can come in, we can take the idea and actually develop a full uh, working, it's not even really a prototype, it's a full version one kind of release for ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, right? So now if I'm a, a large organization with development budget in the millions, that's a pretty good deal, right? It doesn't necessarily meet the developer community. Um, uh, uh, you know, most people here don't have twenty thousand dollars to just throw out to write an application. Um, but this is the great thing about the the um, uh, the, uh, the Bluemix platform is that you know it's there. So what we've done is we've started this whole idea of uh, IBM Global Entrepreneur Program, and what it is is it's no charge resources that are available for um, people that are startups that want to develop their application and actually be able to deliver it, okay? And so the Global Entrepreneur um, Program is really about driving the capabilities out to a wider audience, right? So the next Facebook, right? Or the next Uber. Um, and so what we offer, these are, there's two tiers of, of free cloud components here, right? So it's free. You have to register for it, okay? There is a selection process, but potentially you can get resources, so this is the Bluemix stack and the platform that it runs on, um, for $2,000 US a month, right, is what you'll, that's how much capacity you'll be given, right, for a period of one year, right? Um, likewise, there's another program, uh, which is basically for a larger, slightly larger enterprise, but again, these are organizations that haven't been incorporated um, for more than a year, right? And that's up to uh, $10,000 a month for 12 months, okay? So w one of the things we've done in Toronto is we've actually cleared out the entire main floor of the main IBM building, so which is pretty substantial. I think it's about 20, the, the, the building itself is a quarter million square feet, but the, the main floor has been cleared out and we're inviting all kinds of startups into that space. So they have, you know, you bring your laptop, you plug into the, the cloud-based environment, that's great. You've got a, um, a platform on which to develop your applications. That's good. You've got credit on that to be able to develop and actually run those apps, right? What's missing is the subject matter experts. So in Toronto, we have a building full of subject matter experts that come down and are available as part of this program, even out here in Victoria, to help you get started, to help you understand some of the, the, um, the architecture, how things should be done, how things should be deployed. Um, and there's also support for go-to-market. So great, I got an app. How do I get it out there, right? Like just posting it in one of the app stores isn't enough. So how do I actually look at doing marketing as part of this, right? Um, you know, on the technical side, so how do I support and, and ultimately grow that application, right? 
So how do I enable um, business continuity resiliency? Um, because the, the Bluemix um, platform is available globally, there's the ability to take something that you develop here in Victoria and actually port it and get it running and be available for customers in China, right? Or around the world. So if you have a, a particular idea that is a global idea, who is it that was complaining that Canadians don't think big enough? Somebody said it earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, here's a, a platform that's inherently global. So you know, you can think beyond your backyard, beyond just BC, beyond just Canada, beyond North America, and truly develop something that is deployable and supportable on a global basis. Um, there's other things too. So as part of the program, we have business mentorship, right? So you got your application, you've got it running. You, you know, how do, I, how do I take that to the next step? How do I, uh, you know, what else can I do to enable my success? What are some of the other business constraints that I have and how would I overcome them, right? And so this is kind of experience that we also bring to the table, right? Um, so we didn't talk about SoftLayer. SoftLayer is basically the, the infrastructure as a service. It's that physical hardware. Um, we have uh, SoftLayer, we call them pods or data centers all around the world. Um, including Canada. So that allows us to, to meet, for example, BC privacy regulations. So I want to do something with citizens of BC data. Well, I can make sure that that resides in Canada and stays in Canada so that I can, I can build apps that will support, for example, public sector enterprises or other ones that have restrictions around it, right? Um, and Bluemix is a software layer that sits on top of that. So, um, so that's basically the, the, the pitch, but um, if you want to take a look at that developer.ibm.com startups for anybody that's interested, um, again, so there's free resources, uh, not just technical, not just software, but platform and business resources that are available as part of this program. You just have to go online, use the URL, register, and basically float your idea through. Um, and again, this is an enablement uh, for you, so we don't take any IP position in this, right, just because you use our stuff to run it or build it or come up with the idea. We retain no IP at all. And the, the long-term goal for IBM in this space is to simply seed as much as possible with the intent that, you know, if we have 100,000 developers over the next two years, you know, maybe 10,000 of them might actually be viable companies. And out of those 10,000, a handful will be the next massively disruptive organization. And hopefully we'll grow with them, right? So um, the infrastructure, the buildings, the servers are all kind of paid for by large anchor tenants anyways, so we might as well use the spare capacity to, to spur on innovation. If one of those little companies ends up taking over the banking industry, which, you know, based on, well, what we've seen with, with um, blockchain in particular, I, it, if I was a bank, I'd be a little scared, right? It's, it's a game changer. But, um, but anyways, if anybody has any questions um, on how the program works or how to get access to it, um, just let me know. So I'll be around probably until two, I hope. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. Is there any questions from anybody in the audience right now? I never heard of uh, Bluemix actually before you yep. came up, so thanks for talking about it. Um, I am familiar with AWS though. I used it like all the time in my previous project and I'm currently using some of the Google Cloud stuff in, my, in a new project that I'm starting. Yep. Uh, am I right in thinking that the IBM, st the Bluemix stuff is comparable to those? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So a, a lot of the same services that you would use on AWS or our other services would be available here as well. So again, we take the, the, like, what are some of the services used today? So like EC2 on AWS and the, yeah. the storage service as well. Yeah, exactly. App so engine on, on Google. Yeah, so those, a lot of those same types of services would, it may not be exactly the same, but those same types of services would be available in cloud as well. So um, uh, li likewise, you, the, the goal is to help you build those dynamic applications, right? So um, if, for example, you have an application that is fairly peaky, right? So being able to have the system uh, help you develop the system so that it can dynamically scale up and scale back down, right? So when we were working with a developer the other day around student registration systems, right, which are typically fairly peaky, right? Um, and being able to, when nobody's registering, they actually scale down to the point where there's almost no consumption of the assets at all, so. But yeah, check, check it out if you get a chance, yeah. Well, so the, the, the great thing about the garages is just that, right? It's, it's an innovation space, right? You're there to develop something new, which is the fun part. And they work really well, right? I mean, it, it goes without saying, right? You get a bunch of smart people in a room with a bunch of tools that they know how to use. All you need is some ideas and things should happen. Um, there is a desire, absolutely, to have more of the Bluemix garage experience in more places. 
And based on the success we've had in Toronto and other places, I, I'm optimistic we'll get something. I can't commit, obviously, but, <laughs> but, but it would be a nice idea. And, and certainly the Victoria community here has done a stellar job of, of uh, raising the profile of what's available from a skills and from a development and ideas perspective in, in Victoria. So, so again, thanks to the, the, the team and, our, and uh, our host today for that. So. Yeah, so with SoftLayer, I think there's uh, 12 countries in which pods resides, reside today. Um, one, we continue to expand and grow those pods. Um, typically, as you'd expect, we do sort of two pods, at a t two pods at a time per country. So you have a primary and a backup capability, which is important. Um, what's interesting about the Canadian pod, just as an example, is I, I think the majority of tenancy is actually from companies that are U.S. companies operating outside of the U.S., so which is, was kind of interesting. Um, one of the things that, that helps to um, enable the cost effectiveness of, of SoftLayer, uh, unlike Amazon or some of the other competitors, is that you don't pay for data transfer in uh, between any two sites. So if you're working with a client in, in China, as a good example, and you need to transfer data from here to another SoftLayer system somewhere else, you don't pay for any of that data transfer, right? So we have clients that have heavy, large operations in the UK, um, for example, f photo analysis, photo sharing applications, where they're pretty big files that you gotta zip back and forth across the way, and, and through some of the traditional services, you get, you know, your compute charge is fairly modest, but your data transfer charges are huge and we mitigate or eliminate those charges. Um, once the data is in the cloud, you can move it all over the world as much as you want. There's no charge for it, so. And any other questions? So, and again, I just want to emphasize that, you know, this is not just for development, but it actually is a production resource, right? So you can build, you can run. Um, the, the platform has forecasting tools as well. So one of the things that funders often like to know is, okay, you got you know, 30,000 clients, that's great, or, or 50,000 app downloads. How do you scale to a million? Or how do you scale to 500 million, right? And, what, and you know, that's a difficult thing to, to eyeball, right? A whole bunch of different issues. How do you scale into China? That's a big, big opportunity. Um, so what this does is there are forecasting tools that allow you to really understand, okay, well, if I'm consuming this amount of resource for North America and I want to scale that to Europe or to someplace else, it'll help you forecast that and give you some definitive numbers on what that will look like. Okay. So anyway, um, be brave. Get in there. Give it a try. Fail fast. <laughs> iterate. And most of all, have fun. Thanks.